Hello. <laughs> My name is Amigo Andrea. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's, it's really not. No. Wouldn't be Indigo. In Spanish, it would be, be Enrique. Enrique. <laughs> but I'm Hank. I'm Robin. And we are Living, Living Life's, Life's Journey. Journey. <laughs> the bumpy and crazy journey that we go through over the river, through the woods, <laughs> to our house. Because I'm the grandma. Uh, we went to, well, then we went to great grandma's house because we went to my mom's house. Yeah. So. All kinds of fun stuff, but uh, we had fun. We got oh, back yeah. from our trip. Three weeks yep. away from the desert for a while, and it was beautiful, wonderful, awesome time. Yes, and we yeah. got inspired by Socrates. And we said that we were going to uh, do a video for you guys, and the inspiration from Socrates was his immortal words of, I drink what? Yeah. We're, held to, we're here to tell you what not to drink, because holy oh, crap, yeah. there's some stuff that you think you know, but, but yeah, when you think you know, you don't know what you think you know because I know what you don't know because I know I've been there and if you knew what I knew then you would know what I know and I know what you don't know and that's what you need to know. Other than the Encyclopedia Britannica full of stuff that we learned, we're going to knock it down. We're going to squeeze it down just a little bit. Yeah. Almost like when you grab somebody's nose and squeeze. Right? That's not fair. I, that's not, I can't. That's yeah. not nice. She was the klutz this week, not me. Yeah, I attacked my utility drawer and it shanked me. <laughs> so that's what happens. So you go ahead and piss off your RV by not taking care of it and it bites back. But anyways, mm. anyway, so as we're, we're talking <laughs> about RVs, let's go ahead and let's get into what we're talking about as far as let some me, of the things that we're doing. Let me bring out my notes. So, my notes. And you know, we do go to a Baptist church and if you've ever been to a Baptist church, 95% of them start with three key points. So we're going to limit ours to three, three key points. points. Yes. Uh, we, we haven't done this before. This is new. To us. Well, the, the whole thing is, is you tell yourself, that's okay, I know better, I'll make it happen. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. But anyways, uh, so let's, bring let's it down. jump in. So, first so the thing, first one we're going to cover is travel time. Travel time between one, from one destination point to another. Whether it's you're going from here to this next city over, or the next state over, or whether it is being re realistic in the time of travel. We thought we had this, and so all my dudes out there who are used to drive across country are like, yeah, I made it in 12 hours flat, 2,000 miles. Awesome. Right. Yeah. The whole <laughs> thing is, it's when you're in an RV, it's a different story. It's a different lifestyle. You hear it said all the time, hey, uh, slow down. Enjoy the journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey to get there and the memories you make along the way. But we didn't listen to that. We're like, no, get there, get there, get there, get there. 10 hours a day first two days then three hours on the, on the, the last day it the was first two days hell, the first two days <laughs> the first two days was a pain in the butt and, you know one of the things that led to that we're going to talk about on our next key point but the biggest thing is slow down and plan what you're doing enjoy the journey along the way we just talk about living life's journey well it's a journey go do it right well but, and also what you're able to do in a vehicle getting from point a to point b going mock five and with your hair blowing on fire you, you can't realistically do that while you're traveling in a 12,000 pound 19,000 pound 20,000 pound vehicle it isn't well, going to work that way and you're you're so, constantly aware of everybody around you you're constantly looking at things and it's a lot more stressing to do that and it wears on you over time and those 10 hour days that we did that was a so very very stressful the same thing about it is taking the time to travel and enjoy yourself stop at rest stops the rest stops are not just for you to look around and go pee stretch your legs out let your puppies out if you got dogs whatever breathe a little relax probably don't want to plan for driving more than three four hours a day just so you can relax and enjoy yourself most rv places have check-in at noon uh one o'clock and they have check out by 11 so if i check out at 10 30 11 and drive for three four hours get there at two o'clock to my next place I can relax a little bit and go through and, and take a look at the scenery around you. You're you're looking. You're using that money that you're spending at these uh, destinations and putting it to use. But moving on from there. So the next the next order, as we totally beaten the, the whole travel time thing, is safety. Uh, as we told you on this trip going up to Montana, um, we had that tire blowout. And we learned um, 
safety, safety, safety is a key thing in all considerations. So, um, like he was talking about the tires. You don't know what you don't know. Um, and here's the whole deal. I'm not a tire expert. I've become a pretty good shade tree expert by necessity because I had to learn really quickly. Most guys, if you're like me, you're like, hey man, the tire's got tread on it. It's still got tread, you know, tread path. It's still thick rubber. It looks looks decent. It's just a little bit off color, but it ain't that bad. Well, if you didn't know this, tires have a shelf life. They have, for lack of a better way to put it, they've got some exploration to them. What it is we need to know. But ultimately, make sure you check your stuff. If you don't know what it is, do some research. That way you can learn what it is before you go out on the road. Because if you get stranded, what do you do? Like, we had this plan, like, oh, we're going to be good over these goods. So we hit the side of the road, and this is the other safety thing. Do you have the right gear? I had road guard vests for us. Didn't have road cones. Didn't have triangles. Didn't have flares. Didn't have anything. We're on the side of the interstate going up a hill with only about three and a half feet of a shoulder to pull off on with a big freaking drop off on the side. So what do I do? Um, so we are now in the process of purchasing all those other items to carry with us so we don't run into that situation again. Um, so one of the things to also consider is making sure you have the proper tools. Reflective gear, uh, things of that nature that draws the attention from passer buyers that get them away from your broken down vehicle so you can break down. But another thing to also consider is having it readily available all information that you may need if you do break down or should you become incapacitated and somebody needs to come to your assistance that is have an emergency contact list with all your stuff in there so that way i would recommend putting it in your glove box of your tow vehicle if you're towing a trailer if you're in a class a have it up front in the glove box somewhere somewhere accessible to where if something happens you've got all the numbers you need in one spot you can call you get all the policy numbers just like she's saying we happen to have that everything was there readily in the glove box so we could get it all out we didn't have to freak out plus with us, uh, we go through USAA and we had a bank app that had with our insurance that had um, everything in it, so we were good and ready to go. And the last and the final thing to go over is talking about uh, expenditures. Understanding and having a, you have come up with an idea of what expenditures you're looking at, but having an understanding overall about what the expenditures are cost, maybe for this travel. Uh, fuel costs. Fuel costs are not going to be the same between state to state. Uh, some places like in Texas, it was a buck ninety-eight for gas. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to be the same in California. The whole thing was we had budgeted a lot more, which actually helped us out because, as we said, we had a tire problem, so we changed out all four tires. It was thousand dollars gone, which leads into another thing: Do you have money for those emergency repairs? repairs. Mm -hmm. Did you? Do you have? And I'm going to tell you, in, in an RV, if you're taking off. Whether it's credit card or however you got it, if you ain't got enough of it, if you don't have at least fifteen hundred dollars accessible for an emergency fund while you're traveling, you could find yourself hemmed up really quick. We were just getting tires. Tires is not even talking about like massive repair on the side of the rig. Now we don't have a warranty on our rig, so if something goes wrong, we all have out to of pocket or in an insurance claim. Uh, you know, you got to think about all those things and how does it go forward. Another thing is food costs. And I'm not talking about, you know, McDonald's or that one restaurant. We're going to that one town in, in Wyoming and I want to go to that steak shop that we've, we've always wanted to go to. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like we just said about, you know, should something come up and say your refrigerator all of a sudden stops working. But now all that food that you had in there is gone. Not only that, but also something to consider. We were doing this during, during the COVID, uh, this whole COVID thing where we've been into certain, uh, grocery stores where certain food items were not readily available and the cost of meat and dairy products which was normally like 205 or whatever for a gallon of milk was like up there and so those cost expenditures had changed depending on where we were at those things you have to consider as well or also being prepared for everything increasing due to holidays it just having to be Everywhere we were going, there were certain holidays going on, whether it was a Founders Day, whether it was Patriot Days, whether it was a baseball tournament, softball mm -hmm. tournament, soccer tournament, rodeos. Almost everywhere we went, there was some, some big event going, going on, on which increased prices in different areas. So be careful of that. And same thing with camping. And camping sites, again, because there's things to consider that regarding, especially regarding camping and the areas that you're going to, it's not going to be the same even for the size or the amenities that might be available are not going to be within the same price. You may be thinking, I'm going to get, I want, you know, only to spend $20, but then you go into that state and that's not available. 
So what are you willing to spend for that campsite to get what you need, need, not necessarily what you want, just to get by until you get to your destination. So those are things that you really need to consider what and what, what you may need with your money and balancing it out to make sure that you have enough to enjoy the time that you have for these trips. Because right now we're still only able to make these trips, these jumps. We're not able to cruise around right now because we're still active duty. And right now we're just making these plans as they go. So this is what we've learned so far. And this was our first trip out the door and we we're learning it as we get. But that to us was the most eye-opening experience um, in just learning new things. So all of this comes down to one simple thing, plan ahead. There's an old saying that we talk about the Marine Corps all the time, and it's been said in numerous other places. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, mm -hmm. right? And it, you never know what's gonna happen ultimately in the end of it. Just go with what you can, do as much preparation as you can. Once you get about 60% of a plan, you should be good for where you're going to. Just make sure you know what's around the area so you can help work some other stuff out. If you plan these things out right, if you look at the right things, and then slow down to enjoy it, don't rush it, you should be fine. Uh, again, with us, it was a lot more expensive than we wanted. It was a lot more stressed out than we wanted, but we rushed it. We tried to jump out the door and do everything all at once. And mm -hmm. we, we did what everybody will tell you on all these different video channels not to do. And that's we we're trying, trying to make to it like a regular everything. vacation where we do all we can rather than say, you know what, I'm just don't do anything. Yeah. And you know, small side note, when you go out and you go plan to do stuff, stick to the plans you have. If you only want to do two or three things while you're there, you do them. those two or three things and don't let everybody else talk you into doing 45 bajillion other things yeah. because that can be a danger too. And it takes away the joy of the moment. Mm -hmm. But we learned, and we learned a big lesson, and I think in the end, we still had a good time. It was, it was not bad. Yeah. It was. So thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. Don't forget to uh, give this video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to this channel as we have more, more and more things coming along in the future, like motorcycle rides and Yep, and we're going to show you about the dreaded poo poo pyramid. Ooh, that's coming up too. Ew. All right, you guys take care, love one another, and we'll see you guys soon.